June 2014 and we've travelled to Bo, Sierra Leone to join with leaders of government and civil society and 1,500 Sierra Leoneans to embark on a week that will see the distribution of millions of bed nets to families across Sierra Leone. We glad in Naya, this Mogada Naya this morning for say today we will begin this World Body Week. Nearly 7 million people left will benefit from this bed net distribution yeah, so we will do. And if for day, for that they able for first Malaya for the next three years. Mother and Child Health Week is a countrywide united effort on a vast scale. 3.5 million bed nets are en route to health posts across the country in an effort to stop malaria nationwide. Be the change. Use the bed nets. Value your life. Please do it for the future of your children. UNICEF leads this effort to combat malaria at the start of Sierra Leone's annual rainy season. This monumental project will create an historic change in the lives of babies and children, the future of the country. The whole country has come together around this, mobilised three and a half million nets in, in a period of a week. We have to succeed, so I don't think we have a choice. Together we will make sure that every person in Sierra Leone will go to sleep under a net, protected from the threat of malaria, and for the children especially, dreaming of their future. The impact of malaria on Sierra Leone can only be described as a plague. In 2013, the World Malaria Report found Sierra Leone had more than 2 million suspected cases amongst fewer than 6 million citizens. This means a third of the nation's population are potentially living with the disease. As UNICEF's immunisation specialist, Dr. Nuhu Maksha, explains. Malaria is a real scourge in Sierra Leone. Malaria, diarrhea, and then a respiratory tract infection happen to be the most, three most common causes of illness in Sierra Leone. Malaria is the topmost reason why people visit hospitals in the country. And for pregnant women, it has also resulted in either premature delivery, abortions of the pregnancy, and in addition to their sickness. And certainly, malaria tops the list in the re reason for death among children, especially children under five. 85% of malaria deaths occur in children under five years of age. Roland Monash, UNICEF's representative in Sierra Leone, has first-hand seen the terrible impact of this illness in his two years working here. Sierra Leone has the highest under-5 mortality rate in the world, so there's nowhere in the world where more children are dying under the age of 5 percentage-wise than, than, than here, where we are. It's unacceptable in a place like this where it's green, everything grows here, people should be able to, children should survive and grow up and, and they're sleeping under a bed net. And that's what we're doing here. We, we want to make sure that every child in Sierra Leone sleeps under the bed net every night. The fight against malaria has been ongoing across Africa for many years. And in Sierra Leone, UNICEF's first project to distribute bed nets took place in 2010. Four years later, the lessons, successes and failures of the first project have helped guide the strategy now being adopted by UNICEF and its partners. In 2010, uh, when the concept of bed nets was really in, in the initial phase, people said we need to get bed nets in Sierra Leone. And it was a successful effort, but we realised that after a few years that some people were not using the nets anymore or then the nets got torn. So actually there's a policy that every, after every three years you need to replace and do it again if you really want to be successful. And everybody needs to sleep under the net. We travel to meet with Jennifer, a Sierra Leonean woman living with her family in a small village on the outskirts of Bo. 
For mothers across this country, malaria is an illness they deal with every day. The world body business now nah, just complain walking. The nine are malaria no more. Malaria, nine are we sickness. Jennifer lives on her own with her four children. The youngest Abdul is two. And she is keenly aware of the threat to both children and pregnant mothers. And I'm Maria working afraid, working the pan belly for let not hold me. So I can afraid for let for, for let the sickness not hold me. So when I see when you see me body warm no more, I can rush for going to the hospital. For let, for let them go treat me. For let the Maria dump on me. They not affect the picking way they inside my belly. Like families across Sierra Leone, Jennifer dresses her son for their journey to the local health centre to receive a small package about the size of a pillow that could save their lives this rainy season. Well, right now, we tell God thank you for this well body business here. Because first time will be the strain for this well body business here. So I'm glad you so much when they give me this tent here. Because then they go make if my mosquito bets myself, I don't go get that sickness again, that Maria. I don't go get her again. We move on to Port Loco to visit a remote distribution point. Travelling is tough on dirt roads and across rivers. A reminder of the scale of this operation to reach every household within a week. Some of the communities that you might have seen, is, uh, they are very difficult to access. You cannot get there by bike or, or, or vehicle. The only way is you either go uphill on foot or you go to some riverine areas in dug out canoes. So we had to engage the communities who avail their services in terms of transporting the nets. In late 2013, UNICEF conducted a household registration in order to establish where the population was and how many bed nets were needed. The results found a total of 1,095,000 households in Sierra Leone. The net has been calculated on the basis of one net to 1.8 people, which we rounded up to one net to two persons. Each voucher is equal to a net. If there are three people, they are given two vouchers. If there are four, they will still take two vouchers. If there are five, they will get three vouchers. Five and above get three vouchers. The whole idea is that to ensure that at least two people are sleeping under a net, and especially children and pregnant women. At a local level, health workers travel from house to house distributing vouchers. Vouchers are then taken to health posts where people receive a net and also instructions on how to treat the net and hang it in their house. Critically, these bed nets are treated with insecticide to repel mosquitoes for maximum efficiency. This means that each net needs to be hung outside for 24 hours before use, as this woman explains. This individual process is played out across the entire country, a huge undertaking. Everyone in Sierra Leone is involved. It's a major undertaking and it's done by, most of it is by the staff of the Ministry of Health and other uh, people in the districts, in the chiefdoms, in the villages. This is done by nurses, community health workers, doctors, pharmacists, logisticians, 
and then transporters, volunteers, it's because there are thousands and thousands of people involved. It's difficult to identify who, who has done it because we've done it together. For the Minister of Health and Sanitation, the crisis of malaria is of paramount concern. As a government, we have taken the fight against malaria very seriously. In Sierra Leone, we have one of the worst forms of malaria, one of the most deadly forms of malaria. So we have the, an obligation to our people to really do the right thing and make it a priority in our development agenda. The Ministry has overseen this massive operation ensuring coordination across all levels of government and mobilising health workers across the country to reach the entire population within this short time frame. All health workers, the district manage, health management teams in all of the district, the health workers across this nation have been focused on the Mummy and World Body Week to ensure that the bed nets gets to the beneficiaries. And what has happened is that we have been on radio, we have been on TV, we have been working with chiefs, traditional authorities, we have been working, working with the very last man standing in the most remote villages of Sierra Leone. When speaking of the role of health workers, Minister Cabo is effusive in her praise. The health workers that work with the, in, within the Ministry of Health and Sanitation are actually the foundation, are the pillars that hold the health sector and even hold the development of a whole nation. They are going to get, in my way as a Christian, their own blessing because it is a blessing to be committed to the, to the work that you have signed up to do and you stand firm to deliver on that promise to say, I am a health worker and I'll do my very best to save my people. That's it. You're fine. We travel on to the outskirts of McKenney to visit veteran health worker Diana. Diana is at the coalface of health care for women and children in her community, responsible for deliveries, antenatal and postnatal care for hundreds of mothers and children. I just love the job because I like working with my people. I want to save life and I've saved so many lives. <laughs> Temporary distribution points like this one have been set up for remote communities, as Dr. Nuhu explains. We have one, 1,200 health facilities which are the static distribution points. But we know that some of these health facilities are far removed from certain communities. For instance, there are some places that are as far as 17 miles from a, a health center. So we had to put in between what we call temporary distribution points to be able to bring the service closer to the population. <laughs> Diana is in high spirits following a few days of distribution. She knows that this is life-saving work. UNICEF is trying, other donors are trying, the government is trying, and we also, the human resource, are also trying to help reduce this death rate among the pregnant and under fives. Most malaria infections are caused by blood parasites transmitted from person to person through bites of infected mosquitoes. For children, a mosquito bite can prove fatal. Malaria contributes to children's infant mortality because children's immune system are not able to fight the parasites adequately. So children, um, if not uh, identified early, if not treated properly, will end up having a full-blown malaria that can result in cere cerebral malaria that can also quickly ki uh, result in their death. So that is why to prevent children from malaria is most important. Here in this small community, 
The rainy season has already taken its toll. With the death due to malaria of a one-year-old boy the week before the net project took place. The boy's father is grappling with the speed of his child's decline. Almost two, one day, making two days, I didn't pick in time. And one day, from Thursday to Friday, he been sick, but the sick will be sick now long, almost now two months ago. The first sick will be sick, sick. But this sick now, we can happen and back. I don't take a okay, I'm going to hospital. Straight. Because he be first sick. I don't care and go back now hospital, then go treat her. And then I begin to see better now. Do this thing I can't happen. No more. Mothers across this country have had to endure the loss of a child due to this disease, the most common cause of death among children. To combat this heartbreaking toll, there are two key strategies, prevention and treatment. With bed nets, the key to prevention. As always, prevention is better than cure. Treatment should ideally be the last resort. Malaria is preventable if only the mosquitoes that transmit this uh, uh, malaria normally bite at a certain time at night, around 10 p.m. So if everybody can be under the net around that time, it is possible to minimize uh, to a large extent. And for children, actually, it is possible to protect them from malaria. Further, the more people who use bed nets, the more effective they will be. More bed nets equals less mosquitoes. Studies have shown that the more people using a net in a particular community setting, the more effective it is in preventing that community from malaria. The treated bed nets not just protects those who sleep under it, but even those around it, because that net, as uh, the treated bed net, will ward off. Even if there is a hole in the net, but mosquitoes will not be able to land on the net. When they land on it, they will die. Therefore, the larger the population using it in a community, the more the effect, and the more will be. Uh, will, will people be protected against uh, malaria? We travel further into Bombali district to meet with a traditional leader. Paramount chiefs, leaders of the 149 districts, are actively participating in the rollout of bed nets across the country. Hello, madam. How you doing? Malaria has been the biggest killer disease in Sierra Leone and my chiefdom also, because uh, my chiefdom is one of the most remote chiefdoms in Bombali district. Hello, Unadu. In these remote communities, where poverty and low education levels are most entrenched, children are made vulnerable by superstition and a lack of basic healthcare know-how. Paramount Chief Kande Finau III sees the impact of these limitations in his community every day. When they see a child convulsed, they say, oh, this is witchcraft, not knowing that it is malaria. So that has been killing a lot of children, a lot of mothers, a lot of pregnant women because of ignorance. But now, because of this campaign, I think things are changing. Following the 2010 distribution, bed nets were often discovered being used for a range of unforeseen purposes. Some were discovered to be used as fishing nets, in the home as a sponge, and even as a football net. Having witnessed the misuse of bed nets previously, the Paramount Chiefs together have passed a bylaw 
that will hold anyone found to be misusing their nets accountable. Uh, we are ruled by custom, tradition and customs in our own localities. We have customs and traditions. This has been the usual practice that in your own community as a head, you have to foresee for your people, you have to know what is the dangers ahead. So because of this, we make sure we make a bylaw in our communities. And that if you don't hang your bed net, they will levy a fine. We have a bylaw that you pay some amount of money for your negligence and to make sure you use it. And to also serve as a signal for the other people who have not done the same thing. We walk with the Paramount Chief from house to house as he confirms the correct installation of bed nets in his district. Yeah, how are you? I've met the Chief, he's done a remarkable job. He's, uh, he's really a leader in health for children and women and their families. And that makes a difference. Good leadership, you need good leadership because it's dedicated time, volunteerism. People need to be motivated to, to do this, to, to help the others. Uh, the human touch, the face and the real results here on the ground are, are yeah, it's amazing. Driving through Sierra Leone as the week progresses, bed nets spread across the country. The chalk markings showing a health worker has visited a household are now evident above nearly every front door. The pale blue bed nets can be seen everywhere you look, draped from trees and buildings. Finally, at the end of Mummy Pickin' Well Body Week, we arrive in the capital. Here, in densely populated Freetown, malaria creates a massive burden in public hospitals. Of all the things, all the hospitals we have, all the clinics we have, if you will look at a row of 10 people, it is most likely that seven of those are coming with either malaria, diarrhea, or respiratory tract infection. Which means that the health service heavily is responding to the burden of malaria. This is all too evident in the capital's women and children's hospital, where malaria accounts for most patient admissions. This is one. That's why he ended up, she ended up with anemia. Because when they, they get run fever or with that malaria, their mothers don't come earlier. So they end up getting anemia, except we transfuse them. So many of them here now are malaria cases. The emergency ward is stretched to capacity. Children and babies are cared for two in each bed. We sometimes get over 20 malaria cases during the day because just like yesterday, it was about 15 that we admitted in this ward. So the prognosis are poor because of the condition they come in with. Sometimes they even died on arrival. The survival of children is the future of this country. Something that Dr. Nuhu feels very passionate about. The more children sleep under the bed net, the more children will be protected to ensure that they live a long life and, and, and achieve and realize their goals. And then the more will be the workforce and the human resource of Sierra Leone that will pull the country out of the economic doldrum that it is now. And then the, 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 this will be one of the, the, the poverty alleviation strategies that uh, would really impact positively on the economy of 
सर एल And just as the children of today are a nation's future, so the Bednet project is driven by broad ambitions for the development of a nation. I, I think uh, the, the future of Sierra Leone is very bright, but in the next five years is make or break. The country is, has come out of a, out of a crisis. We are seeing positive development. The fragility is, 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 is reducing. The development focus is, is there. There are coming additional resources in from uh, the extractive industries, the mines and other opportunities. If we use that money right and we spend it on children and women and invest in their future, which basically means health and education and making sure that they survive and have a, have a bright future, then this country is on the right track and it will be a middle income country in the next 20 years. In the sky, clouds gather dark and pregnant with rain. The strong monsoon winds will soon blow the wet season down on millions of Sierra Leoneans stricken by poverty. But this year, a net has been cast across their sleeping children and pregnant women. The families of Sierra Leone have gained an invaluable defence against the scourge of malaria. One man came here and said, he told the mosquito yesterday that today is the last day you are going to chop me. You will never chop me because tomorrow I'm going to get pregnant. So we have saved, we have saved so much lives.